Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Poziom rozszerzony. Usłyszysz dwukrotnie teksty do zadań od pierwszego do trzeciego. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz dźwięk. W nagraniu przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z poleceniami oraz treścią zadań sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania w trakcie słuchania nagrań oraz w czasie przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie pierwsze. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. Today I'm going to talk to Professor Jerry Smith about the monkey puzzle tree. It's an evergreen tree native to the Andes, which might become extinct within a few decades. The unusual name derives from its early cultivation in Britain. It is believed that the owner of a young tree in Cornwall was showing it to a group of friends, and one said, It would puzzle a monkey to climb that. Because it is an evergreen, it is often used as an ornamental tree. Since the trees are more valuable alive, they are rarely cut for timber, but harvesting of the nuts has put survival of the trees at risk. The once thriving tree population is now beginning to diminish. Let's see why. Professor Smith, can you... Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. One. Today I'm going to talk to Professor Jerry Smith about the monkey puzzle tree. It's an evergreen tree native to the Andes, which might become extinct within a few decades. The unusual name derives from its early cultivation in Britain. It is believed that the owner of a young tree in Cornwall was showing it to a group of friends, and one said, It would puzzle a monkey to climb that. Because it is an evergreen, it is often used as an ornamental tree. Since the trees are more valuable alive, they are rarely cut for timber, but harvesting of the nuts has put survival of the trees at risk. The once thriving tree population is now beginning to diminish. Let's see why. Professor Smith, can you... Two. This bill is outrageous. Who do you think you are? I think I'm someone that needs to get paid for the work done. But it's only four pages of work. Let me tell you a story. Picasso was sitting in a cafe one day when someone asked him to draw something on a napkin. He did and asked for $25,000. Like you, the man said it was outrageous because it only took him a minute, to which Picasso replied, Actually, that took me 40 years. So you think you're Picasso? No, but I did spend the last 15 years learning how to write that four-page document you're holding in your hand. If you were able to do it, you would do it yourself. You came to me, not the other way around. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Two. This bill is outrageous. Who do you think you are? I think I'm someone that needs to get paid for the work done. But it's only four pages of work. Let me tell you a story. Picasso was sitting in a cafe one day when someone asked him to draw something on a napkin. He did and asked for $25,000. Like you, the man said it was outrageous because it only took him a minute, to which Picasso replied, Actually, that took me 40 years. So you think you're Picasso? No, but I did spend the last 15 years learning how to write that four-page document you're holding in your hand. If you were able to do it, you would do it yourself. You came to me, not the other way around. Three. 
Tiger Territory is now open at London Zoo. The 186-year-old site has undergone a massive redevelopment to make way for the new enclosure. Visitors will embark on a journey through an Indonesian habitat, coming face-to-face -face with tigers through floor-to-ceiling glass windows. The new exhibit has been designed with a team of tiger keepers to ensure that it suits the big cat's needs. Tigers are excellent climbers and like to observe their terrain from a towering vantage point. So tiger territory, with its tall trees to scale and high feeding poles, encourage the tiger's natural predatory behaviour. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. 3. Tiger Territory is now open at London Zoo. The 186-year-old site has undergone a massive redevelopment to make way for the new enclosure. Visitors will embark on a journey through an Indonesian habitat, coming face-to-face -face with tigers through floor-to-ceiling glass windows. The new exhibit has been designed with a team of tiger keepers to ensure that it suits the big cat's needs. Tigers are excellent climbers and like to observe their terrain from a towering vantage point. So tiger territory, with its tall trees to scale and high feeding poles, encourage the tiger's natural predatory behaviour. Zadanie drugie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. Tags are signatures in the form of words or symbols sprayed on walls. We asked a few people what they think about tagging, and more generally, graffiti. Speaker 1 I think that graffiti is a valid art form, which might brighten up dull, lifeless concrete blocks. Tagging, however, is different. I've never seen a tag which showed any sign of artistry. If we claim that tagging is a form of art, we might as well say that mugging is a form of street theatre. It's absurd. Tags are now sprayed everywhere, on people's cars, houses and fences. Clearly something must be done about it. For one thing, legal regulations might be modified. In my opinion, tagging should be punished much more severely than graffiti. It doesn't make sense for them to be prosecuted in the same way. Speaker 2. With all the mess and corruption that goes on in the world, tagging or graffiti shouldn't really be a cause for social concern. Trains, buses or taxis are all covered in adverts. Is tagging much different? Why is it OK for a corporation to plaster its brand everywhere, but it's against the law to spray tags? Mindless vandalism should be prevented, but not at the cost of restricting the creativity of young people. Teens need some kind of encouragement to channel their talent into something worthwhile, and allowing graffiti or even tagging in designated spaces is just one way to do it. Speaker 3 Graffiti is not something I enjoy, but I guess it might be a work of art, so it should be financed with lottery grants or taxpayers' money to the same extent as other art forms. Perhaps there's even a market for it. I saw pieces of graffiti which work perfectly as advertisements. However, tagging is just mindless vandalism and taggers should be sentenced appropriately. Not necessarily sent to jail, which is costly for society. The best idea is to have them clean up their own work as well as other acts of vandalism in the neighbourhood. Speaker 4. I heard people say that graffiti enables young people to show their creativity, 
but I cannot see any signs of talent on the walls covered with aggressive slogans and awkward drawings. Tagging in particular is irritating. It makes a mess of the environment around us. Tags appear on any available surface. The message they give us is that antisocial behaviour is tolerated in the neighbourhood, and residents start to fear that vandalism and mugging will follow close behind. I think taggers should have their tags printed on their foreheads using indelible ink that will take weeks to wash off. Then they would think twice before spraying someone's property. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Tags are signatures in the form of words or symbols sprayed on walls. We asked a few people what they think about tagging and, more generally, graffiti. Speaker 1 I think that graffiti is a valid art form which might brighten up dull, lifeless concrete blocks. Tagging, however, is different. I've never seen a tag which showed any sign of artistry. If we claim that tagging is a form of art, we might as well say that mugging is a form of street theatre. It's absurd. Tags are now sprayed everywhere, on people's cars, houses and fences. Clearly something must be done about it. For one thing, legal regulations might be modified. In my opinion, tagging should be punished much more severely than graffiti. It doesn't make sense for them to be prosecuted in the same way. Speaker 2. With all the mess and corruption that goes on in the world, tagging or graffiti shouldn't really be a cause for social concern. Trains, buses or taxis are all covered in adverts. Is tagging much different? Why is it okay for a corporation to plaster its brand everywhere, but it's against the law to spray tags? Mindless vandalism should be prevented, but not at the cost of restricting the creativity of young people. Teens need some kind of encouragement to channel their talent into something worthwhile, and allowing graffiti or even tagging in designated spaces is just one way to do it. Speaker 3 Graffiti is not something I enjoy, but I guess it might be a work of art, so it should be financed with lottery grants or taxpayers' money to the same extent as other art forms. Perhaps there's even a market for it. I saw pieces of graffiti which work perfectly as advertisements. However, tagging is just mindless vandalism and taggers should be sentenced appropriately. Not necessarily sent to jail, which is costly for society. The best idea is to have them clean up their own work as well as other acts of vandalism in the neighbourhood. Speaker 4. I heard people say that graffiti enables young people to show their creativity, but I cannot see any signs of talent on the walls covered with aggressive slogans and awkward drawings. Tagging in particular is irritating. It makes a mess of the environment around us. Tags appear on any available surface. The message they give us is that antisocial behaviour is tolerated in the neighbourhood and residents start to fear that vandalism and mugging will follow close behind. I think taggers should have their tags printed on their foreheads using indelible ink that will take weeks to wash off. Then they would think twice before spraying someone's property. Zadanie trzecie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania.
Today, I'm talking to Dan Wilson about a very special song. Dan, when and where did you and Adele write Someone Like You? Adele and I met at Harmony Studio soon after Rick Rubin had called us both and hinted we should work together. Rick's opinion carries a lot of weight in our world. I liked his initiative because I hoped Adele could be persuaded to sing a duet with X Factor participants, so I agreed to meet her. Could you tell us what it was like writing a song with Adele? Adele came to the session with lyrics and melody for the first half of the verse at least. It was a song about her heartbreak, a very personal one. We went to the room where the piano was. There Adele showed me the idea for the verse and started playing the guitar, but when I switched to the piano, she lit up. That's way more inspiring, she said. And were there any lines that you argued about? Not really. We didn't have any arguments or tussles. Adele knew exactly what she wanted to say, but there were some lines where she took my advice and agreed to rephrase them a bit. But my role was composing the music. Once we decided on the melody, she very quickly came up with that amazing line, I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited. Once you have a line that great, the rest of the section is easy to finish. So everything was running rather smoothly. Well, by the end of the first day, the demo was sounding lovely, but it was only half written. There were no words for the second verse. Adele couldn't stay late because she had a meeting in Malibu. Next morning, she came back to finish the demo, and she said she had played it for her manager and her mum. It irritated me because I don't like people to hear works in progress. But she said her manager loved it and her mum cried. And when we released the song... I would hear reports from other people who would tell me that it made them cry too. It's kind of strange, it seemed like a very common response to the recording. And all this even though the record company has kept it small, no choirs or strings, just as we wanted, Adele's voice and the piano. And the last question. Did you have a feeling that the song would be a hit when you were writing it? Once we started recording, I was very much concentrated on making sure we got a killer vocal. I felt this was a special recording. Adele sounded so great coming back out of the speakers. I was determined to make her sound natural, vulnerable and devastated. On the second day, Adele's voice had a rougher, more ragged edge. I suggested we go back and record the last chorus again, so it would sound more emotional. We had a few goes at it, but when we finished it, it was heartbreaking. Thank you, Dan. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Today I'm talking to Dan Wilson about a very special song. Dan, when and where did you and Adele write Someone Like You? Adele and I met at Harmony Studio soon after Rick Rubin had called us both and hinted we should work together. Rick's opinion carries a lot of weight in our world. I liked his initiative because I hoped Adele could be persuaded to sing a duet with X Factor participants, so I agreed to meet her. Could you tell us what it was like writing a song with Adele? Adele came to the session with lyrics and melody for the first half of the verse at least. It was a song about her heartbreak, a very personal one. We went to the room where the piano was. There Adele showed me the idea for the verse and started playing the guitar but when I switched to the piano, she lit up. That's way more inspiring, she said. And were there any lines that you argued about? 
Not really. We didn't have any arguments or tussles. Adele knew exactly what she wanted to say, but there were some lines where she took my advice and agreed to rephrase them a bit. But my role was composing the music. Once we decided on the melody, she very quickly came up with that amazing line. I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited. Once you have a line that great, the rest of the section is easy to finish. So everything was running rather smoothly. Well, by the end of the first day, the demo was sounding lovely, but it was only half written. There were no words for the second verse. Adele couldn't stay late because she had a meeting in Malibu. Next morning, she came back to finish the demo, and she said she had played it for her manager and her mum. It irritated me because I don't like people to hear works in progress. But she said her manager loved it, and her mum cried. And when we released the song. I would hear reports from other people who would tell me that it made them cry too. It's kind of strange. It seems like a very common response to the recording, and all this even though the record company has kept it small, no choirs or strings, just as we wanted. Adele's voice and the piano. And the last question: Did you have a feeling that the song would be a hit when you were writing it? Once we started recording, I was very much concentrated on making sure we got a killer vocal. I felt this was a special recording. Adele sounded so great coming back out of the speakers. I was determined to make her sound natural, vulnerable, and devastated. On the second day, Adele's voice had a rougher, more ragged edge. I suggested we go back and record the last chorus again, so it would sound more emotional. We had a few goes at it, but when we finished it, it was heartbreaking. Thank you, Dan. Czas przeznaczony na tę część egzaminu minął.